Well, hello and welcome to our Bite Size video for today. We are looking at a series called Living Distinctly, where we're looking at the teaching Jesus gave on the Sermon on the Mount, saying to his followers, if you're gonna follow me, you are gonna live differently to the world around you, and this is what it looks like. But today, we are gonna look at how and what Jesus thought of the Bible. I wondered if you've ever tried reading the Bible. How did you find it? Sometimes when we open the Bible up to random bits, we can find it quite surprising. I still remember the day that I happened to open up Song of Songs. It's a book of the Bible that makes Shakespeare look unromantic. It's got two people who are in love and describe each other using the weirdest compliments you've ever heard. Things like, your hair is a flock of goats. Maybe try that one on someone at school, see how it goes. Or maybe, rather than shock and confusion, you've read bits of the Bible that just seem boring or dull like the long lists of names or the chapters that list numbers of people in different families in Israel. Maybe you've heard from your youth leaders that it's important to read the Bible, but you're not sure why you need to read about what the Israelites could and couldn't eat. They couldn't eat prawns, which would have been gutting, but why do we need to know about that today? Well, today we're looking at a bit in the Sermon on the Mount where Jesus is teaching people what it means to follow him. And he's gotten off to quite a good start. People are really interested in what he has to say. And a lot of people are wondering if this new teaching Jesus is giving is gonna replace the old teaching, which is what we call the Old Testament. Is this like a holy software update, version 2.0, replacing version one? Let's read what Jesus says. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. Jesus says, I have come not to abolish the law and the prophets, which means this shorthand for the Old Testament, but I have come to fulfill the law and the prophets, the Old Testament. Our topic for today is, what does Jesus think of the Bible? And the first thing we can learn is that Jesus says, the Bible is all about him. It's all about him. Jesus says, not only am I a fan of the Old Testament, it's actually all about me. He fulfills the Old Testament. Well, what does this mean? How is the Old Testament all about Jesus? Well, here's just a few quick ways, but this is a journey that, of things that I'm still learning about how the Old Testament relates to Jesus. Firstly, Jesus completes the story of salvation. The Old Testament is the story of God finding a way to have a relationship with humans after we sinned and cut ourselves off from God. And when we read the Old Testament, we can see how God finds ways to do this throughout the Old Testament with things like sacrifices and laws that help keep his people pure. But these weren't permanent solutions. As you read the Old Testament, you, you might think, how on earth is God gonna save humans from our mess? And then suddenly, at the new, start of the New Testament, boom, Jesus comes along and provides a way for us to be saved. Jesus completes the story of salvation that began in the Old Testament. And then another way that Jesus fulfills the Old Testament is that there are loads of predictions and prophecies about Jesus. Loads of stuff in the Old Testament points us to Jesus. There are prophecies of things like one who will be born to a virgin, someone who will be born at Bethlehem, someone who would die a painful death on behalf of others. And some of the characters and themes that we see in the Old Testament are actually pictures of Jesus. One like, example of this is the perfect lamb who was sacrificed to make a way for other people to be forgiven. Jesus was that lamb for us to be forgiven. Or even in Song of Songs, the two people who are so much in love shows us how much God loves us and is devoted to us. So when we read the Bible, we can read all of it knowing that it is all about Jesus. When we get to the bits which list how much the Israelites had to do to be in a relationship with God, that makes us grateful for how easy it is now for Jesus to come and have a relationship with us. We can read the Bible and we can play like, where's Jesus? Rather than where's Wally, which is good fun, we can play where's Jesus and spot Jesus throughout the Old Testament. What does the Bible tell us about Jesus? And how does what the Old Testament says make the plan of Jesus coming to save us even more incredible? So, what does Jesus think of the Bible? We've seen first that it's all about him. Secondly, let's look at how it's all about heart. Just after telling people that he's come to fulfill the Old Testament, Jesus goes on to say this. For I tell you, 
that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. Well, what does this mean? Well, this would have been really shocking for the listeners to hear because the Pharisees and the teachers of the law were the holiness experts of the day. They spent all day trying to be righteous, trying to not do anything wrong, doing everything that God has told his people to do. But Jesus says that in order to get into heaven, we have to be even better than these people that are supposedly experts at being perfect. What does he mean by this? Well, he means that actually the Pharisees, the people that were holiness experts, had seen the the laws in the Old Testament as a checklist of things that they had to do to show off, to prove that they were the best, to prove that they were good enough. And Jesus says that the Bible was never supposed to be used in this way. It isn't about a list of things to try and do to be good enough in God's eyes. That's actually never gonna be successful. It's about the heart. It's about God loving us and us loving God and our actions flowing from that relationship. It's about us wanting to honour God with every part of our lives and so living in a way that he says is best for us. Jesus goes on in the rest of the chapter to give six examples of commands from the Old Testament that the Pharisees had turned into a checklist rather than making it about heart. The first command that they pick up on, that Jesus picks up on, is do not murder. This is what Jesus says when he's talking about this command. He says, you have heard it said to people long ago, you shall not murder, and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with a brother or sister will be subject to judgment. Now, you'll be pleased to know that I've managed to get to the age of 25 without murdering someone, success. But Jesus actually says that if we've gotten angry with someone, it's as if we've murdered them. Now that seems pretty extreme at first, but what Jesus is saying is that what goes on in our heart matters. It's not enough to just not murder someone, but we have to love them on the inside. That anger is the root cause at which we start to move towards in various steps, maybe murder, but if we just deal with it when it's in the heart, then that is the first and best way to deal with it. God wants us to love him with all our hearts. He doesn't want us to just see the Bible as a list of rules we have to follow to feel like a good person. It's actually so much more radical than that. He says, do you love me enough to invite Jesus to come and give you a new heart? A heart that is slow to anger, that doesn't hold grudges, that always speaks truthfully, that's fully surrendered to him and his way. And that is the question for us today. Are you all in? Thanks so much for watching Kingsgate Youth on YouTube. Don't forget to like us, maybe drop us a comment and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a thing. For more content like this, don't forget to follow us on Instagram and TikTok at kingsgate.youth. We'll catch you in the comments.